Hey everyone and welcome in. My name's Kuth, and lately I've been talking to a lot of new players who've had a lot of questions about Paths of Exile, because it's a very deep game and not everything's explained, so I decided to put together this video. We'll be going over a couple of tips for newer players, as well as some resources just everyone should know about. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First and foremost for new players, think they should do follow a build guide for at least your first build, if not for more. Path of Exile is an incredibly deep game, like I said. Not only do you have this massive passive tree to start with, late game, you have another one for the end game system, as well as various mechanics and depth to all the different things you can do late game. Following a build guide will help you kind of learn the ropes, how defensive layers work and everything. You can go off on your own, but you're going to hit a wall very early and struggle to progress. So for at least your first build, as well as follow up builds for a little while, I would suggest following an established build guide. And then you can try tweaking those around until you get more and more comfortable with the game and you can start branching out on your own. There are lots of different ways to find build guides out there. You do want to be a little bit careful as some people try to inflate their numbers to seem like it's more accessible or better than the build really is. Down in the description below, I'm going to put links to a couple builds that are very beginner friendly, very easy to follow, and can be done on a beginning player's budget. I'll try to put something in for a spellcaster, a ranged build, a melee build, and then also a trap build if that interests people. You can find them down below. Next up, let's go over third-party resources for Path of Exile. Path of Exile is very fortunate in that there are a lot of third-party resources out there, some of which are amazingly helpful in a variety of ways. The first I want to go over is Path of Building. Most build guides you come across will have something called a POB link in the description, and that is just the Path of Building link. Path of Building is a tool that lets you do so many things, such as follow along a build guide, plot out your own, look at putting different items in your build to see how it changes your damage. You could go into your calculations and see a whole variety of things, configure it in different ways. It is an amazingly powerful tool. Good build guides, especially for beginner players, will actually also break down the leveling tree so you can know where you want to put your passive points first. So like for this one, it shows levels 1 through 12, and then 12 through 25, all through there. It also tells you how to set up your gems as you go through. So it's a very easy way to follow along and just make your way through the campaign. And it kind of holds your hand as you're getting used to Path of Exile. Path of Buildings to go to for trying to create your own builds. As I said, you can plan out the passive tree and make sure you're getting what you want out of it. Like getting enough life, getting the damage, getting your resistances up. But Path of Building is huge and I think it's almost mandatory for every single player. I'll put a link down below, but you're going to want to get the Path of Building Community Fork. The original Path of Building, I'm not sure, is even updated anymore, but the Community Fork is now the go-to, and I'll put a link down below for anybody who would like to get that. Next up, let's talk about Loot Filters. Path of Exile drops a lot of items. As you can see here, if I hold one of my buttons, you can see the items on the ground that are just hidden by my Loot Filter. If I didn't have that, all of those would show up and just clutter my screen. Loot filters in gr are great in helping you quickly see currency, valuable items, items that might sell for currency at NPCs, which we'll go over later. Loot filters are just huge quality of life. One of the best ways to do loot filters is through Filter Blade. Filter Blade is an, another amazingly power resource that allows you to do things such as customize your filters you can just take it and take it from regular if you're just starting out and then as you go up you go all the way up through semi strict very strict customize all different things determine what drops you basically have full control over everything that drops in the game and how it's displayed if you want to see certain things that are normally hidden you can turn it on if you want to hide certain things that are normally shown you can turn them off you can tailor make it for yourself you can then just load it up into the game it is supported you can see it uh if you go to options game you can then do item filter and load it up there Filter Blade can sync directly with your PoE account and you can just load it into the game so you don't have to download anything to your computer. I'll put the link to the website down below, but this is another one of those things I think is almost mandatory for every single player. 
As I mentioned before, I think path of building and loot filters are mandatory for pretty much any player. We're going to move on and talk about a resource that isn't quite as mandatory for people, but still a good one to know about in case you want to check things out, and that's PoE Ninja. PoE Ninja is basically a giant database. You can use it to check things like currency exchange rates, uh, unique jewels and how much they sell for. You can use it to check for, uh, I use it for skill gems a lot. Uh, you can see how much they go for as well and then modify the level. It also gives you a kind of trend map so you know if, oh, these just became recent, popular recently. Maybe they're not as consistent, so I maybe shouldn't want to level them up. It can do so much for you. You can also find builds and filter it by unique item or skill. So if I clicked on, say, Spark, I could see some of the top people using spark and i could go in and see all right they're playing a pathfinder and there's spark and some other stuff about them it is a giant database that can be very powerful if you can leverage it correctly now that we've talked about helpful third-party applications let's talk about some items you can sell to vendors to get a little bit of currency back first one of these is the chromatic orb you can talk to any npc vendor and give them an item that has one red one blue and one green socket all linked together which means they just have these little connectors here you'll start finding these types of items very early on you can just pick them up and sell them to a vendor and they'll give you one of these chromatic orbs it's a great way to start building up your currency a little bit early on next up we'll talk about jewelers orbs if you vendor an item that has six sockets to an NPC vendor, you'll get seven jeweler's orbs. These aren't going to show up until later in the campaign, and they can only be on chest pieces and two-handed weapons, so they're not going to be super common, but you should still see quite a few of them, especially in the late game after you get done with the campaign. Pick them up, sell them to a vendor, you get seven jeweler's orbs. Next up, we're going to talk about gem cutters prisms. There's two ways to get gem cutters prisms from a vendor. The first of which is just to vendor a gem that already has 20% quality on it. This could be a gem you just find and don't think you're going to use. You can just give it to the vendor and they'll give you a gem cutter's prism or GCP that improves the quality of your gems, making them better. If you don't have any of these, because it's pretty rare for them to just drop with 20% quality, you can sell any number of gems whose quality adds up to 40. So we have 10, 6, 6 for 22, 9 for 31, and another 9. And as you can see, that gives us another Gem Cutter's Prisms. They just have to add up to 40. The same type of rules can also apply to flasks. You can vendor a 20% quality flask and get a glass blower's bobble, or you can send sell flasks that have a total quality of 40%, like these, and you get another Gem Cutter's, or sorry, another glass blower's bobble, just like you would for gems. Now, the last one is not a way for you to get currency, but it's a way for you to save currency, and that is to vendor a gem that is at level 20, which is the max you can get without doing funky stuff to it later, like this one, and one gem cutter's prism. This will give you a level 1 version of the gem, but it will be at 20% quality. So instead of having to use 20 gem cutter's prisms on all of your gems in your entire build, which as you can see is a lot. This is a way you can save quite a bit of currency and you will just have to re-level your gem. This will be very important for something we're going to go over at the end of the video, which is a way you can kind of just make currency playing the game with hardly any effort. I wanted to wrap this up, this section up by saying there are a ton of vendor recipes in the game. There are a ton and some are still being discovered to this day. These recipes are just ones you should know about as a beginning player that should get you started and kind of get you used to the fact that there are recipes out there and it could be a way to make currency that you didn't know about until now. All right, so next up we're going to talk about your ability hotbar and how to avoid maybe accidentally deactivating auras during combat and squeeze a few more buttons out of your hotbars. First thing we're going to talk about is left click. When you start the game, you have your default attack, which we can just do here. It is pretty useless. You need to kill the first zombie, 
but after that i almost always get rid of it if you accidentally left click on an enemy while trying to move you will go through the default attack animation which can really be a hindrance really slow you down and sometimes get killed so after i kill that first zombie on the coast and get the ability the gem I switch to just walking this way even if you click on an enemy you'll just walk towards them instead of going through default animation default attack animation later on you can actually bind instant cast stuff to left click and then whenever you're walking you'll just cast it whenever it's off of cooldown so here I have steel skin which gives me some armor for a short period of time I cast and I just keep moving and then once its duration is done it'll come off of cooldown and as soon as it's back it'll cast again you can also do stuff like Vortex, which just leaves behind a damaging cloud of cold damage. This is great for cold damage over time elementalists, cold damage over time occultists, and stuff like that. You can also bind things like detonate mines, that way whenever you're walking, you just automatically detonate your mines. And also things like Phase Rush, which just give you move speed, give you phasing, and a little bit of elusiveness. That way, just as you're walking around, you get those bursts of movement speed. Next up, we're going to talk about the secondary bar not a lot of people know about. If you hold control, you get five new buttons. They're just control W, control W, or control Q, control W, control E, control R, and control T. Just your normal five here, but if you're holding down control. I use these a lot for auras. That way I don't accidentally deactivate them during combat. And if I die, I can just quickly hit them again to reactivate all of them. If you're playing a very button intensive build, sometimes you can also put things like vol skills here. That way you don't accidentally use them and they're just an easy quick hit for you to use. And it's a very deliberate thing you have to do. That's a way you can kind of squeak out more buttons out of your action bars and get more out of them. As well as avoid some mistakes and make your gameplay a little bit smoother, hopefully. Alrighty, so last thing I want to go over in this video is leveling up gems in your alternate weapon setup. This is a way for you to start making money from day one. You can do this within five minutes of starting the game. It is not a get rich quick, but it can be a very nice amount of money, especially when you're starting off and it takes next to no effort. You can do this just by playing the game. So when you open up your inventory, you see everything here. You see your equipment, all of that. If you press X to go to your alternate weapon setup, your weapon and your offhand change. You can put a different weapon and offhand in this alternate weapon setup and socket gems into that weapon. Now, when you're on your main weapon setup, you can't use any skills you put there, but the gems will still gain experience. So you can put gems in here, level them up to level 20, and then use the recipe we talked about earlier, where you take your level 20 gems, so say I just leveled these up, put them in with a gem cutter's prism, and then you get 20 quality versions of them. You then put them back in your alternate weapon setup. I don't have a blue link on that one. I just grabbed this from my inventory. Put it in, and then go back to killing stuff, getting it all leveled up again to level 20. Then you have a 20-20 gem that you can then sell. That's all there is to it. It takes a while for you to level them up, but it happens in the background. You don't have to pay any attention to it other than just clicking on the little level up icon that'll show up over here like the rest of them. And when you get it to level 20, make it 20% quality, re-level it again, and then you can sell it. Now, you can just pick any gem you find, put it in, level it up, and try to sell it later. If you want to try to min-max how much money you make off of it though, you can use POE Ninja that we talked about earlier. What you'll do is you'll go down to skill gems here on the left hand side, go up to these filters, you're going to want to set the level to level 20, the quality also to level 20, no corruption. Corruption is a way that can unpredictably modify gems. People like to pay for clean gems, which means they're 20% quality, 20 level 20, and uncorrupted. That way they have the potential to be better. Corruption can also make them worse. And then you want to go from type normal. There are different types of quality for some gems, but the one you come across in the game, unless you're doing one specific mechanic, is going to be normal. So what you can do is look at this. 
these are going to be the ones that sell for the top. You can also look at the trend here to see if they're more popular lately or if they're pretty consistent. It's like this, a divine blessing support sells pretty consistently for 40 chaos. You can start leveling that up. Phase run, same thing, 40 chaos, fairly consistent. You're going to want to make sure you try to match the color of the gem with the class that you're running. If you're running a class that is more focused on strength, you probably want to be leveling up the red gems because you know you're going to have enough strength to meet the requirements as they level up. If you're doing more of a witch or shadow or templar build that you're going to have more intelligence, look for things like wrath or blue gems, bone chill support are great. If you're running a ranger, then do phase run. Just make sure you're trying to match up the color of the gem so it's according to what class you're playing. Red gems generally need more strength, green gems generally more need more dexterity, and blue gems generally need more intelligence. But going from that and using this, you can min-max how much money you make from this strategy even more. And again, this is something you do just by playing. It takes almost no effort. You can do it from day one. Just put any spare weapons you have in your alternate weapon setup. Remember to swap back to your main one for actually playing the game. But then these will level up, earn you money in the background, and then you just have to sell them at a later date. This is a tip that a ton of people don't know about even after they finish the campaign. and is something I recommend to absolutely every new player. That's going to wrap up the video. Hopefully this was helpful to everybody. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. Or if you want to see me explain other parts of the game, whether it be mechanics or how skill gems work or anything else, let me know. Try to make a video on it. You can also join my Discord. Link will be down below. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have on there. Hopefully everyone found this helpful, entertaining, and enjoy your time in Rayclast. It is an amazing game, and I hope you all make the most out of it. Have a great time, and I will hopefully... See you all in Path of Exile.